we're going to look at this and I've already set up a number right here and you can see that I've set up 146. Now how do we get that? So here's 100 and in case you can't see that this says 100, there it is, boom, 100. And then here's uh, 40 and in case you can't see it, there's a 10 and we have a bunch of them. So we have four 10, so that's 140. And then these are of course our ones. So we have 146. Now what's really cool about the place value disk is that we can now immediately and visually say, well, if this is 146, so let's write that down, 146, we can say, well, what's, what's 10 more than 146? And we could just go, boom, there, there it is. 156 is 10 more than 146. Or I could say, what's one more than 146? And it's right here, 147. So all of a sudden, uh, identifying 10 more, 10 less. We could do 10 less. What's 10 less than 146? Take one away. It's 136. Or what's one less than 146? Take one away. It's 145. So it becomes this visual way to really start to see the place value. Uh, place value and what's going on. Now the idea of this being a place value disc is I'm not putting in the beautiful tables with a the label that says hundreds, tens, and ones. I am letting <clears throat> right now the color and the symbol on it uh, rep, uh, represent or really indicate what place value we're dealing with. So that students at this point in the game, I'm talking about first grade, maybe second grade, definitely after they've played with their base 10 blocks, uh, they, uh, the order doesn't really matter so much at this point because I can still see that this is representing 100 no matter where it is on my board. So let's get that back. Let's get it back to 146. And that is where I start, is identifying what uh, place value disks are, how to use them, and how to uh, use them to build numbers. I can give a student a number and then they can build it. If I were to say, I want 32, I would want kids to say, okay, in no particular order, I know I'm gonna have two ones and I know I'm gonna have three tens, so 32. Um.